Let's take a further look at the CVP interactive model or our course volume profit model. Uh, previously we showed how the basic model works but now we're going to do some additional analyses using the model. Uh, if you recall the model is based on uh, the price per unit price or cost per unit times the volume which generates uh, total dollars up to the contribution margin line and by subtracting fixed expenses we get operating income. We're going to stick with the same model and we're going to use these basic amounts here that uh, were similar uh, to our previous uh, discussion. Now we're going to go into some further analyses. The first area we're going to look at our target profit calculations. A target profit calculation essentially allows us to use the model to, to determine uh, questions such as how many unit sales are needed to attain a specific target of uh, profit or how much sales dollars do we need to generate in order to attain a certain uh, target profit uh, level. In this case here um, we uh, we have a, a formula that is uh, input into uh, the worksheet in addition to the model itself that will include uh, any amount put into this highlighted cell for a target profit. For example, we're in this in uh, this sample here, we are saying what if we wanted a target profit of $50,000? In other words, we want this $8,000 instead of being $8,000 to be $50,000. Well, what would it take to do that? What it's saying here is that we would need to attain, if all things, other, other things being equal, we would need to attain uh, sales of 15,000 units. And how is that uh, determined? Well, the 15,000 is determined by this formula here. It's the target profit, or, or the 50,000 in this case, plus the fixed expenses. And our fixed expenses in this example are 40,000. So that would give us 90,000. And that total divided by the unit contribution margin. The unit contribution margin being the $6 over here. So 90,000 divided by 6 tells us that we would need 15,000 units in order to be to uh, attain a uh, target profit of $50,000. Now, what does that translate to in terms of uh, uh, sales? Well, in terms of the sales dollars related to the 15,000, once we know the 15,000, obviously we could m multiply the 15,000 times the $15 sales price per unit, and that should give us 225. But there's uh, also a prescribed formula that generates that 225. It, again, it's the target profit plus the fixed expenses, but this time we divide by the contribution margin ratio, not the $6 per unit, but the, the ratio of 40%. By dividing by the ratio, we would then generate the sales dollars that are needed of 225. Now, just to prove that, let's let's uh, let's take this 15,000 and insert that up here uh, instead of the 8,000. And by doing that, we should get the uh, $50,000 in profit. And there we go. We get $50,000 in profit. Now let's let's. Uh, uh, and what kind of sales volume? Not only the 50000 in profit, but it also shows that it's 225000 in terms of uh, uh, sales dollars. I will return this to our 8000 so we'll keep our model intact here. Okay, so that's a little, uh, little analysis of how to play with the model to uh, determine what is needed in terms of sales to generate a, t a certain target profit. Well, let's further take a look at uh, some break-even calculations. And break-even means uh, what do we need to have in terms of unit sales uh, in order to generate zero operating income. We don't want any loss and we want to know uh, how far can sales go down before uh, we would incur a loss. Uh, in this case here, unit sales needs to be 
uh, here we have 8,000 units in the model up here, so we're generating $8,000. But if we have, uh, in this case, 6,667 units sold, that will bring us to a break-even or uh, zero in operating income. And how is that? What's the formula that's built into this model? It's the fixed expenses of the 40,000 divided by the unit contribution margin of six dollars so if we were to divide the six dollars into the forty thousand we would get the six thousand six sixty seven uh, similarly the dollars of sales that are needed for break-even uh, very similar to our previous calculation if we take the fixed expenses of forty thousand and divide by the contribution margin ratio of forty percent in this case we would get a hundred thousand so with a hundred thousand dollars of sales we will break even. If we drop below the 100,000, we will start to lose money. Let's move on. Margin of safety. In other words, that, a that asks or answers the question that, w that I just said previously. We noticed that our break even was $100,000. And this margin of safety answers the question how far can sales drop before we uh, start to lose money? and we pretty much calculated that in the last one we realized that the break even was 100,000 if we subtract 20,000 from the 120,000 in this current model that gets us to the 100,000 or to the break even uh and that is is uh the formula for that is determined by taking the actual sales minus the break even sales that we had on the previous screen now the the uh, percentage or the margin of safety percentage says that sales could drop 17 percent from this 120,000 level uh, before we would uh, start to lose money and in this case that's the margin of safety in dollars which is the 20,000 uh, divided by the the sales or the uh, budgeted sales so again 17 percent drop would work and our last calculation is our operating leverage or our degree of operating leverage and that degree of operating leverage is calculated by taking the contribution margin and uh, dividing it by the operating income. So in this case, it would be the 48,000 divided by the 8,000. And that generates our degree of operating leverage. Hope this has been helpful. Uh, again, these calculations are automatic within the model. Uh, so as you analyze uh, operations or as you take your, yourself through different exercises use the model to prove your uh, your answers to be correct